What's up everyone, it's Caddy with Money Vesting. In this video, we are gonna be talking about Uber, ticker symbol U-B-E-R, and it's been a while since I've done a video on this company. And I'm gonna break down what the numbers were for the first quarter of fiscal year 23. The stock did rally after the earnings came out. And we're going to try to make some assumptions and, you know, predict really what the future is going to look like for Uber to better understand where the fair value is going to be, where is going to be that intrinsic value for the stock itself. So hope you guys enjoy this video, find it helpful. If you do, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're just joining us for the first time. The link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below if you're interested in joining us. And of course, getting access to all the buying alerts, options alerts, trade ideas, trade alerts, and of course, the private live streams, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and the private videos as well. So link's going to be down below with limited spots left. And the first week of the month is the best time to join. So Mark Mahaney, who we have had on the channel before, we've interviewed him, uh, is a very, very big Uber bull. And uh, analyst Mark Mahaney shares his top two stock picks, giving one of them 152% upside. So the first one, of course, is Meta, but this video is not about Meta, but he does say that I still like Meta here and it's still my number one because the valuation here, I think is still super attractive. I think he's talking about the Reels monetization, WhatsApp message, business to message uh, is also got a lot of potential there. So it's trading at a discount to the market for what I think is a company that can sustain 20% 20, 20 plus earnings growth. And you, you don't see that too often. But that is for a separate video that's more on Meta. But this right here, the number two pick, and that is going to be ride-hailing company, ride-hailing app, Uber. He expects Uber will have increasingly positive EBITDA earnings before interest taxes, depreciation, amortization, and free cash flow. Uh, Mahaney gave Uber a price target of $75, implying a potential upside of 152%. He said in March report that Uber has, quote, substantial long-term profitability potential, adding to its mobility unit achieved a 30% EBITDA margins before the pandemic. And Evercore expects those numbers to expand after the pandemic, citing scale and cost efficiencies as well. So Uber obviously had a very nice uh, price action after the earnings came out. So it ended up rallying over 11.5%, now trading at over $36.52. I haven't covered Uber a whole lot on the channel. So I think it's going to give us some opportunity to really look closely into this company and see whether there is an opportunity in this stock or not. Again, Lyft and Uber kind of trade very similarly. Lyft was also up, but they are going to be reporting numbers uh, later this week as well. But Uber definitely is more global as opposed to Lyft being more concentrated in the US. So uh, talking about the numbers uh, specifically, gross bookings grew 19% year over year to over 31.4 billion or 22% on a constant currency basis. Uh, we have revenue growing 29% to $8.8 .8 billion or 33% on a constant currency basis. So very strong revenue growth. Uh, net loss attributable to Uber Technologies was 157 million. So again, this is not a profitable company despite having a very strong revenue growth and you know growing in subscribers and all those uh, metrics. Profitability-wise, the bottom line still unfortunately not profitable. So they they also included a $320 million net benefit pre-tax, primarily due to a net unrealized gain related to revolution, revaluation of Uber's equity investments. Uh, so again, they might have investments in other places, which is getting uh, mark to market, you know, adjustments. And, and for those reasons, they might have to pay, um, uh, you know, taxes as well. And adjusted EBITDA $761 million up from 593. Uh, year over year adjusted EBITDA margins as a percentage of gross bookings was 2.4% up from 0.6% in the first quarter 22. And net cash provided by operating activities 606 million free cash flow defined as net cash uh, from operating activities less capex was $549 million and short term investments and restricted unrestricted cash cash equivalents were sitting at $4.2 billion. So balance sheets, we're going to take a look at that balance sheets not that great uh, for the company. But this right here is the revenue growth so 3.8 billion to over 31 almost 32 billion dollars. Um, and I think on, they're on track to doing a little bit over 45 uh, to close to $50 billion this year in revenues and gross profits going to be, uh, well, it has grown from $736 million to over $9.8 billion. So that's a very strong, you know, 12, 15x growth in the last uh, six to seven years. Uh, but again, if you take a look at the operating income, uh, significant losses every single year and primarily due to the expenses related to, uh, you know, selling general administrative expenses. So if Uber, if there's one company that can actually benefit from all these layoffs, it's Uber right? $7.8 billion is what they're spending on SGNA. It's just absolutely mind boggling because their R&D expense is only $2.8 billion. So this can actually become a very, very efficient business. And Mark Mahaney is not wrong with the operating leverage eventually starting to kick in. If they, if they have, you know, cost efficiencies and economies of scale starts to kick in, there is and can be a lot of potential for this company if they can figure out a way to kind of reduce that headcount 
I know it's going to suck for people getting laid off, but that's how a company is going to be run in the future to in order to become profitable, right? And again, if you talk about how much talent is being underutilized in some of these tech companies, right? Talk about Meta, talk about Twitter, talk about, uh, you know, even the likes of Snapchat and Pinterest and Google and Amazon. There's a lot. I mean, there's a lot. Even Elon Musk himself said that 80% of the Twitter staff was just gone because it was not needed, right? The company can fully run itself with just 20% of the workforce. So just imagine, right, what can Uber do to reduce that number and eventually turn profitable? They just need to shave off $2 billion, $3 billion off of their selling general administrative expenses, and they are, boom, they're operating profit. So that's something that I do like about Uber is that they've got a lot of potential to turn the corner with a flip, a flip of a switch because the gross profit margins are pretty good for the company. This right here is going to be the net income. Again, net losses year after year. In fact, last year of over 9.1 billion, trailing 12 months is over 3.3 billion. And share accounts has also been growing. I'm going to be taking into account 2019 to uh, where we are now from 1.2 to 1.9 billion. That's a 12% growth in shares outstanding. Uber, what are you doing? That's a lot of shares being issued in the markets every single year. Um, and again, dilute EPS also negative, EBITDA also negative. So it's not the ideal company that I like to invest in or I like to look at because again, it's not profitable. Shares outstanding have been growing. Um, and again, operating losses, net losses, balance sheets, not great but it's still something worth looking into, right? Because it has a potential. It has potential to grow into something much bigger than what it is today. 30% gross profit margins, everything else is negative. Return on capital, negative 4.8% return on assets negative 28%, return on common equity 83% negative, and it's only because net losses every single year. Uh, $4.17 billion of uh, cash, which was very much highlighted in the press release, but $11.6 billion of long-term debt, which gives the company net debt of almost $7 billion, so that is not good. And current ratio and quick ratio also are not great. Current ratio is barely above one, and quick ratio when taking inventory out is now under one. And uh, debt to free cash flow incredibly high at over 29. So definitely a D minus balance sheet for Uber. Valuation on a forward basis, non-gap EP 40 times, which for a growth company like Uber is, I would say that's reasonable. And price to sales is trading at a little bit over one to two. And that's actually on the low end. And the price to cash flow on a forward basis is a little bit under 27. Uh, this right here is where the growth is coming from. This is where the actual magic is going to happen and analysts are expecting uber to grow earnings well pretty much come in at a break-even year this year at literally no loss no profit and then starting next year at 71 cents and then growing all the way up to over six dollars and 70 cents by 2032 and again if you take a look at the growth rates 100 percent 35 percent 18 percent 60 percent 22 28 18 right so all these numbers are pretty substantial for the growth itself if you do the math this right here is what it ends up being. So from 2024 onwards to 2029, they're expecting a growth rate of 45%, and then that's gonna decelerate down to 32% by 2032. So those are pretty substantial growth rates for Uber. So because 2023 is gonna be a loss, well, break-even year, um, it's kind of hard to really um, analyze, right, from a fair value standpoint. So that's, it's going to become irrelevant. I mean, we're not going to be able to analyze what the intrinsic value is going to be because 2023 is going to be zero dollars, right? No earnings per share, but no losses either. But if we consider it 2024, let's say, you know, net income is going to be a 1.6 billion, share account is going to stay flat at just under 2 billion. And we're going to end up with an EPS of about 81 cents per share, which is kind of in line with what the analysts are also expecting next year from Uber. And we plug in, let's just say, you know, not a not a 45% growth rate, but a more reasonable, let's say, 40% growth rate for Uber. Um, and we go with, let's say, 25 times P multiple. And a discount rate is going to stay up at a 12%, 10% margin of safety, and 12% shares dilution, because that's what the more recent trend has been. Let's just go with 10% to be more generous here. We end up with a fair value of close to $35, uh, $34 per share. And right now, the price is trading at 36.52. So we're actually not that far off, right? From the fair value, it's only uh, you know, it's it actually could be trading at the at the intrinsic value 36.52 is the market price fair value ends up being at 34, but that's also based on the assumption of 2024 net income of 1.6 billion dollars and share counts at under 2 billion giving us an EPS of about 81 cents per share. It's still going to be trading at a higher PE multiple of 42, which is, you know, what, what the valuation also suggests, 40 times earnings. Uh, but then over time, 
it's going to come down as the earnings grow from 42 to 41, 36, 32, and then eventually coming down to 28 and then 25 over the long term. So we're going to see that P multiple compress as the net income starts to grow in the future. But that's also based on 2024 numbers. So uh, that's going to be the quick analysis on Uber in terms of intrinsic value. Again, 2023, they're still not expected to be profitable. So I can't really uh, you know, do much there. But $30 is going to be that resistance to watch for Uber. Now, if it ends up in the $20 range again, that's going to represent a pretty significant undervaluation for Uber. Uh, you know, when we're talking $20 as the market price and fair value at 34, then yes, it's going to start to become a bit of a no brainer because if the operating leverage starts to kick in and starting 24, they're actually profitable, then um, I think Uber at $20 would make for a good deal. Um, you know, in the market. So that's the level that I would be paying attention to. It's also very nice technical support, uh, but resistance is going to stay put at 36.50. So this right here is going to be that level to watch from a more technical standpoint. And uh, all the way up to as much as 61.60, of course, is going to be that resistance at an all time high. And Mark Maney with a price target of $75, representing, uh, you know, well over 100% upside from where we are right now. So let me know in the comment section down below, what do you think about Uber? Are you buying, selling, holding? What are your thoughts? As always, if you enjoyed this video, find it helpful, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you're just joining us for the first time, the link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below. As always, happy investing, and I'll see you all in the next video.